Man, I don't even know where to start with this. Like, there are so many different thoughts in my mind. So many things I want to get off my chest. This video could definitely get very, very rambly. All right, so fair warning to anybody that wants to continue watching. But I guess I'll begin by just setting up the situation for you guys. You know, giving you guys a bit of backstory for anybody that hasn't been following the news, that has no idea what this video is actually about. Essentially, the AGL Rose Extreme Z Awakening is dropping on Global in a couple hours from now, later tonight. And it's going to be a Global First EZA, which of course is awesome, especially for a Global main such as myself. I didn't expect it, right? When I saw it in the news, it was a huge, huge shock, a huge surprise, but definitely a very welcome one. And uh, I was looking forward to, you know, enjoying him on Global for a while before the JP side got it later on, which of course it was going to happen, but I expected, you know, there to be some period of exclusivity, right? But then, earlier today, we found out that for this upcoming Kefla celebration, which starts, I think, tonight or tomorrow, um, JP is also getting the AGL Rose Extreme Z Awakening. I mean, it is going to be a little bit later, so I think uh, it's dropping on JP on June 9th, but still, literally, less than two weeks, I think exactly 11 days from when Global gets it, JP is also getting the AGL Rose Extreme Z Awakening, and it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean, Bandai made it a specific point to emphasize that this is a global first Extreme Z Awakening, an Extreme Z Awakening, Extreme Z battle that is coming to the global version, the international version of the game first. It says it in the news. And then they release it on JP literally less than two weeks later. It's just very confusing, man. And this is the main source of my... I don't want to say anger. I'm not angry about it. I'm not even necessarily upset about it. I'm just more so confused, man. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Because to my understanding, this whole global first thing started because Bandai sensed that there was some kind of... You know, there were people on the global side that were a little bit upset about the fact that, you know... JP got all the units first, and on Global you have to wait like a long time for new stuff. And for certain things like Extreme Z Awakening and stuff like that, you have to wait extra long, right? There were certain Extreme Z Awakenings that took like 7, 8, 9 months to make it from JP to Global. So um, I think Bandai, the team, sensed that you know there were some people that were upset about that stuff, right? So in order to kind of create a little bit more parity or just to appease, the global player base a little bit they started this whole global first movement if you will i don't really know what to call it this global first initiative right um so that was my understanding but what is the point of giving stuff to global first like new units or extreme z awakenings if jp is literally gonna get it like not the next day but close enough right like 11 days that's not a lot of time <laughs> That is not a lot of time. And before any JP players get upset at me, JP players, you know, start saying, yo, like, here's the dumb global player that wants, you know, everything and always complains. I actually don't complain that much, all right? I want to be clear, if you guys follow my channel, I mean, aside from the, the summons aspect, right, I do complain about getting shafted quite a bit, but uh, as far as, like, global versus JP, the whole, you know, global shaft, JP shaft, whatever, I don't really complain that much. I don't really weigh in that much on this topic but i'm just kind of confused man i don't really get it because think about it this way right like my understanding like i said is that they did this global first thing to kind of create a bit of more more parity more equalness as far as hype releases go because as awesome as it is to you know eventually get like the blue gogeta blue vegeto or any other hype unit that comes to jp first um on global eventually right like it's still hype when it comes to global but it's always more hype it's always the most hype when it comes out first on jp and then by the time it comes to global like three to four to six months later a lot of that hype has died down like i hear people talk about it all the time they're like yo I'm, i was hyped for blue gogeta when i first saw it on jp but then now it's four months later we're two months away actually we're like one month away from the anniversary it's five months later and I'm just not as hyped about it. Like, I'll still summon, I would still love to have these units, but it's just not that exciting anymore. So, my understanding was that, you know, they started doing the global first thing so that global can also get a taste 
of this, you know, hype of like having this new shiny toy first, not something that you already knew was coming, but rather something you didn't see coming and was just dropped on you and we got to enjoy it for a set period of time before the other side, the JP side, would eventually get it, right? Um, but it doesn't seem like that's exactly what's going on now because 11 days of exclusivity might as well be nothing. Like it might as well just come out on both versions at the same time. I don't really know what they're doing here. I don't know what they're um, what the plan was with this, what the, you know, idea was behind releasing Rosie on Global first, and then 11 days later dropping on JP, and you know what, with this whole celebration on JP with like the events that have come out, or that are coming out, with uh, Rosé coming so soon, uh, we know a part 2 is coming for the Kefla celebration, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. I would not be surprised even a little bit if LR Ultra Instinct Goku came out for part 2 of JP's current celebration. And I think I was told that the second part actually starts on uh, June 11th, right? So as soon, as early as like June 11th, June 12th, um, JP could be getting LR UI Goku, which would mean that Global literally had him exclusive for like three weeks or something like that, and that's it. So I don't really know where I'm going with this video, to be honest, man. I don't really know what... If I, if I came in, if I, when I clicked that record button, I don't know if I came in with like a set point in mind, and maybe I don't really have a point. <laughs> it's more so just getting stuff off, stuff off my chest, you know, getting these thoughts off my chest, uh, what I've been thinking about throughout the day, and how, just, just the stuff that's been like confusing me, man. I mean, if you guys have any ideas, if you guys have any thoughts about this, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I want to hear from both sides. If you're a global player, if you're a JP player, let me know your opinions. If you play both sides, then maybe you have the best perspective about this. But um, I just I just don't get it, man. I just don't get it. If there are any Bandai Spies out there, let me know what the <laughs> actual thought process was behind this. Because what's the point of just releasing the Rosé literally less than two weeks before JP gets it anyways, like, you might as well just create parity between the game, like, for real, between two versions for real, and just make the two games on equal timelines. I know, I, I know that's not gonna happen, I know that's not really in their plans, that's kind of why they started doing the Global First thing in the first place, I believe. Um, I mean, at least that's part of the reason. The other part was what I said, which is kind of like, you know, giving global players kind of a taste of, like, that hype of getting a unit first, right? Which is something that usually doesn't happen. Um, and I, I'm not complaining about that, like I know that's a reality of Global, that's just kind of been the thing forever. But uh, it was nice to like have a taste of what that was like, and now it seems like Bandai's kind of pulling back on that a little bit. Like maybe it's because there was so much backlash, so much backlash to the LRUI Goku coming out first on Global, that they decided like maybe we screwed up and we gotta make up for it now by releasing this stuff much earlier than normal on JP as well, because like Super Saiyan Blue Kakun Goku took many months, Tech Hit took many months. Wait, Tech Hit? Was Tech Hit global first? I think he was. I don't know man, I'm getting, I'm getting my units all confused now, but <laughs> SSBKK Goku I know for a fact was global first, and also of course Fizz Vegito Blue's Extreme Z Awakening global first, took a couple months to get to JP, which was fine, right? Like I, I, I expect all this stuff to eventually make it to JP, I'm fine with that, that's cool, I want JP players to be able to enjoy this stuff, but just, just you know, make the exclusive period a little bit longer, right? Like, what is the purpose of just doing this the way they have? They're, they're going to do it with the Rosé EZ8, and most likely, I feel like, the LRUI Goku coming for part 2 on JP, right? It's just... It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's just what I've been thinking about, what's been on my mind. I know this video really doesn't matter that much, right? Like, I don't really... <laughs> really talk about anything um, groundbreaking here. I didn't really make any, you know, great points or anything like that. Like I said, this is just a rambling video. It's just a rant video. It's just stuff that I've been thinking about that I needed to get off my chest, man. Um, you know what? Real quick, let's just talk about something concrete, right? Like this AGL Rose Easy Eight. Like we don't know what he does right now. I mean, I'm sure we'll find out maybe by the time this video comes out. But what I'm thinking right now, at this point in time, while I'm filming this video and the EZA details haven't come out yet, is that um, it's going to be interesting to see what he does, man, because they, they, they got to balance the fact that, like, there's the Int LR Rosé coming to Global for Part 2 of the 5-year anniversary, 
that they can't make this Rosé better than him, because they want people to still summon for the Rosé, the LR Rosé, right? The summonable one, but... Uh, then, at the same time, the, the EZA is coming to JP so soon that, like, they gotta still make him good enough to make people even care about him at all, right? Because if he's so much worse than the Int LR Rosé, like, w w w why are people even gonna care? Like, why are people even gonna use him at all, right? So, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see for sure, like, exactly how good this Rosé EZA ends up being. I still feel like, more, most likely, it's gonna be... They're gonna make him more of like a support type, like focus more, lean in more into the support side, and maybe just give him a really good support passive, like extreme class Q plus three, attack and defense plus 40% on top of like a little bit more attack and defense, right? That could work for sure, um, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, since they're releasing him essentially on both sides at the same time, like close enough, um, they, they gotta balance it somehow, right, in that sense, so... We'll see, man. Maybe by the time the, the, the time this video comes out, like I said, it could already be out in the wild. Uh, if not, then we'll definitely find out in a couple hours since the actual EZ8 is coming out on Global, like I said, later tonight, right? So, uh, that's the video, guys, man. I'm sorry I didn't make any great points here. I, I didn't really, have, like, I didn't really come in here with an agenda, right, with a plan. I just clicked record, I just started talking, and this is just everything straight from my brain out of my mouth. To you guys so once again to all players all dokkan players out there whether you play global whether you play jp whether you play blo both uh <laughs> let me know what you think about the situation man what do you think bandai is actually doing here what is the point of this global first global exclusivity period if they're just gonna drop it on jp anyways in literally less than two weeks so that's the video guys thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed it Hope uh, if I piss some people off, which I feel like I might with this video, I'm not really sure why, but you know, it's just some people out there just get mad for certain reasons that are kind of confusing. Um, hopefully you didn't get too pissed, and as always, if you guys liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out